In the last lesson, we looked at equations that only had one operation to inverse, which is why they were called simple equations. These are called multi-step equations, so we're going to have multiple terms that need to get removed. We might have to combine some like terms. We might have to use the distributive property. So there's a lot more things going on in these equations. When you have a case like that and you have more than one operation to remove, the way that you know which one to undo first is by doing your order of operations backwards. Remember our friend GEMDAS, which is the order of operations, grouping symbols, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So we're just going to go in the reverse order. So I wrote that we do the order of operations backwards. So if you look at our first equation, we have two operations. You have to ask yourself, self, what operations do I have? So I have multiplication, because I have a number next to a letter, and I have addition. So if we're doing our order of operations backwards, the first one that we're going to remove is the addition, and then we're going to remove the multiplication. So I'm going to drop my line down the equal sign and subtract 15 from both sides because the first thing that I'm going to do is get rid of the addition, what operation removes addition, subtraction. So you have this kind of conversation with yourself about what inverses to do. Then you bring down what's left, so I have 3x equals 9, and then you look again and you say what operation do I have? I have multiplication, so I'm going to remove it by doing division. So divide both sides by 3. Remember, use the advanced fraction bar. And so we get x equals 3. Now it doesn't say to check, but you should. So we're going to plug in 3 times 3 plus 15 and then see if that equals 24. So we now we're just doing like regular calculations. So 3 times 3 is 9 and then 9 plus 15 is 24. So I get 24 on both sides. So that was a multi-step equation that just had multiple operations to do. In example two, we're going to look at an equation that has things that you need to do before you start doing your inverses. And one thing that you're going to look for before you start doing inverses are these things called like terms. Now this should be a refresher from seventh grade where you combine like terms like terms have the same variable and exponent. And when you're combining like terms, you can easily combine them when they are on the same side of the equation. In the next lesson, 1.3, we're going to look at equations where the like terms are on different sides of the equal sign, and that takes a little more work. But when they're on the same side, you can just combine them. So when you look at this equation right here, 8x minus 6x, you can see that those are the same terms. They both have the same variable, and they both have the same exponent, which is they don't have an exponent. So 8x minus 6x just easily gets combined to 2x, and then you can bring everything else down. So now you just do it like you did in example 1. You um, say to yourself, hmm, what operations do I have? I have subtraction and I have multiplication. So if we do our gemdos backwards, we're going to get rid of the subtraction first and then the multiplication. So how do you get rid of subtraction? You get rid of it with addition. And so I'm going to add 25 to both sides. And I get 2x equals negative 10. What operation do I have? I have multiplication. So I'm going to get rid of it with division. So then x is equal to negative 5. Now if you were doing this on your own, I would encourage you to check, but since I did it with you, we're not going to. So now we've got one that's even more complex than the last one, and it is more complex because we have the distributive property, and the distributive property is something you have when you have parentheses in, uh, in an expression. So if you don't know anything about the distributive property, make a note and ask about it in class. 
Um, but I'm going to go on like you remember the distributive property is when you take the number that's outside the parentheses and you multiply it by everything that's inside. So I would do 2 times 1 and then 2 times 5x. So that's just a quick little reminder about how the distributive property works. So 2 times 1 is 2 minus 2 times 5x. Well, 2 times 5 is 10 and then the x just carries on, it just hangs out with it, and I'll bring down the plus 4 equals negative 8. Now, I have like terms. They don't, they're not variable terms, but they're number terms. 2 and 4 are both numbers, and since they're on the same side, you can combine them. So I'm going to choose to combine them before I move on to any inverses. So 2 plus 4 is 6, so 6 minus 10x equals negative 8. All right, now, we have a little bit more of a complex equation because our variable actually got switched. In the previous example, our variable came first and our number came second. Here, the variable comes second. So it's a little bit trickier. We're going to do a little bit more of these in class, but let me kind of walk you through this one. The sign goes with the number that's next to it. So this 6, since it has no symbol in front of it, is considered a positive 6. This 10, since it has a minus sign in front of it, is considered a negative 10. So this is positive 6, and this is negative 10 next to an x. So positive 6 is what we're going to get rid of first because this is multiplication, and multiplication gets rid of you do the inverse later on in the process. So I'm going to drop a line, and the first thing that I'm going to do is minus 6 from both sides. I want to just get the number away. Leave the variable term till the very end, get rid of the 6. And the reason that I'm minusing is because this is positive. If you want to put a little plus sign, right, when there's no, no, when there's no symbol in front, it's positive. It's not subtraction because the subtraction actually belongs with the 10. So now I bring down what I have left, which is negative 10x. Don't forget to bring the 10 down as negative. And then this is negative 8 minus 6 is negative 14. Now again, I don't have subtraction. This is not subtraction. This is a multiplication because it's a number. The number just happens to be negative 10. It's a number next to a variable. So the inverse of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 10. Those cancel, and you just have x equals, and then you get 1.4 as your answer. So since this had a lot going on, and it ended up with a decimal answer, everyone freaks out, they think it's wrong, let's check it. So the way that you check is you rewrite the equation, but wherever you see an x, you put 1.4. So two parentheses, 1 minus 5 times 1.4 plus 4 equals negative 8. Now, since I'm not doing any inverses, I'm just going to do regular order of operations. Inverses uh, are only uh, used when you're solving the equation for the variable. When you have the variable, you just do it like you did it, you know, back in fifth and sixth grade. So I have to do parentheses first. Um, so this is 1 minus uh, 5 times 1.4 is 7 and then I bring everything else down. All right, keep going. This gives me negative 6. Bring everything else down. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. And negative 12 plus 4. When the signs are different, you subtract and take the sign of the larger number. So 12 minus 4 is 8, and the 12 was bigger. All right, so like I said, we're going to do more of these because I know they had a lot of little pieces where you could make a mistake. So we'll do more of these in class. But let's move on to the last example, number four. We have to use the table to find the number of miles you need to run on Friday so that the mean, mean, remember, means average, the mean number of miles run per day is 1.5. So how do you find an average? Well, if you forgot, I'll tell you, it's you take the total and you divide by the number of items, which in this case will be 5, and then that equals the average. So let's 
plug in what we know. Well, what I have so far, if I add these all up, I'd get 3.5. So my total would be 3.5 plus x. So that's going to go in for my total. Because whatever x is, I would add that to 3.5. And I'm getting 3.5 by adding all these numbers up. 3.5 plus x. Well, since there are 5 days, I would divide that by 5. And they tell me that the average that I should want is 1.5. So what I'd like you to do is any strategy you want to solve, please pause the video and try and solve for x. And when you think you have it, play and I'll talk about it. All right, you might have used a different procedure to solve, but that's totally fine with me as long as you ended up with four miles. All right, if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.